All right guys, I'm Jared, I'm from Fast Forward Film, and today we're gonna to be talking about Sound of Metal. We ride. So Sound of Metal is one of those films that comes along too rarely. Darius and Abraham Marder carefully weave together a truly intriguing story that unfolds delicately and thoughtfully using the uniquely captivating element of the film's sound design to bring the audience as close as possible to Riz Ahmed's character Ruben. While I've seen plenty of videos rightfully extolling the virtues of this film's award-winning sound design, it wasn't the main thing that struck me about it. For me, I was just amazed how the storytelling allowed me to empathise with and understand the otherworldly experience of deafness, something less than a million young adults in the US experience. How it didn't just show me the new reality of Ruben's life, but how it also brought so many human experiences together to play on every emotional beat available in a filmmaker's arsenal. I'd like to focus on The Sound of Metal's themes to see how a film about a subject that so few really understand can resonate with so many and on such a deep level. This film could be considered a transitional film, that is, a film that begins at the start of an individual's metamorphosis into a new version of themselves. We're given a rich but succinct introduction into Ruben and Lou's lives as a pair of metalheads on the road, but the film really follows Ruben's changes from not being deaf to going deaf to actualizing himself as a deaf person, which is where the story ends. As with many great changes in a life, there's often a struggle, a great deal of resistance and the coping of grief, which in this story is shown a number of ways. A visual reflection of Ruben's struggle with these changes is the use of cigarettes at key moments throughout his transition. When Ruben initially admits to Lou he's lost his hearing, smoking is a warning sign that Ruben may be slipping on his sobriety. When he feels isolated and separate at the end of his first day in the commune. And when he breaks the rules to get in touch with Lou, who is the embodiment of his life before his deafness. But when we see Ruben embracing this new lifestyle, the smoking stops his addictive coping mechanism relaxes. Unfortunately, however, immediately after Ruben is offered a more permanent place at the commune, he has a lit cigarette appear seemingly from nowhere. He gets too close to admitting that things have changed that much, but he just can't face that life might be different from here. So, once he leaves the commune, we see him wasting time with cigarettes at a motel with an ashtray full of them. And when he finally sees Lou again, with his final hopes that life might be exactly what it used to be, he smokes another anxious cigarette. Addiction is a resounding feature of this film, so I will discuss it shortly, but regarding transitions, we can tell when the stresses of change are getting too much for Ruben when we see him giving in to his addictions. The thing about transitional films is that change is an inherent part of being human. It isn't difficult for anyone to recall a memory of when they or something about their lives has changed. And we all know that with changes come hardships, decisions, upheavals, and often tears, loss, but hopefully renewal. This is the chord that plays over the whole film. Things change. And with this comes a familiarity that's easy for an audience to relate with. So you could argue that all films are about change, that without change, we'd end up with pretty boring movies. But Sound of Metal deals with a specific type of change, and this is the theme of loss. Loss is, again, an inescapable aspect of human life, and what makes this film so brilliantly engaging is that losses that everybody understands are fused with Ruben's loss of his hearing, something that most people really don't know much about. It's our collective understanding of loss that helps us empathise with Ruben's loss of hearing. Now, the director, Darius Marder, has wonderfully crafted moments that really put across these relatable feelings of loss that both come with change and have nothing to do with deafness directly. Like when Lou has to leave, Riz plays this as close to a real breakup as I've ever experienced in film. When Ruben feels betrayed at losing his band to Lou as she performs on her own. And when Ruben loses every personal item he owns and his mobile home in the pursuit of his surgery. Not just possessions, but the items that make up his whole career, his vocation exactly like 
losing a job or selling a home. In the end, we see that he not only loses his hearing in the enormous changes that occur, but that his whole way of life before going deaf is gone, something Reuben doesn't want to confront. Another theme that plays an important role and ends up becoming something of a parable is the theme of reminiscence. Reuben, from the outset, is simply working to get his old life back. He just won't see that maybe things might never be the same for him, and with this denial comes the driving force of the tension for our hero. But to talk about what the philosophical point of this theme of reminiscence is, we need to discuss Reuben's addiction. As a recovering addict, Reuben's stakes aren't just that of losing his hearing, his career or his loved ones, but he may even lose himself. The theme of addiction culminates in perhaps my favourite scene of the entire movie, with a sketchy, dishevelled Reuben speaking with the commune's owner, Joe, about Reuben's surgery. All Reuben has wanted to do is abandon the idea that he might now be a deaf person. And Joe explains that the ethos of their community is that deafness isn't a handicap to be fixed. Joe has had a life working with newly deaf individuals and knows that the path of reminiscing isn't a healthy one. But what really tops this scene off is when Reuben asks for money in exactly the same way a drug addict would. <sighs> but, uh, I need money. I need to, uh, just to buy back my RV. You know, you know me, me and Lou. This scene is essentially showing us that Reuben's efforts are misguided and causing greater losses to his character, his strength as a four year sober recovering addict, his finances, and now to a home where he might flourish and grow. The point that ends up being drawn from this floor of reminiscence is most prominent when Reuben is finally able to hear again. But what he hears is nothing more than a crude, shrill simulation of sound. His yearning to get back what has already been lost sends Reuben on a journey of loss and climaxes into a horribly distorted version of what he really wanted. Nothing of his previous life was ever truly going to be recovered, not in any way that was the same to him, but his addiction to what once had been was too great for him to let go. Reuben's denial of his situation drives him for the entire film. And as the film comes to its finale, it's what sends him off to Paris to restart his old life with Lou. Just as Joe had said at the beginning of the film, acceptance of the situation is the best choice to make. And although Reuben forcefully protests this throughout, we get one last reminder of the virtues of acceptance from an unlikely source. Upon arriving in France, Reuben heads to Lou's father's apartment where her father lets him in and feeds him. It's at this point that Reuben hears the same lesson of acceptance from Lou's dad about his own feelings of losing his daughter. He blamed her mother, then he blamed Reuben, but ultimately her father just needed to accept that things happened the way they did and that he's thankful now for being in the position he's in. Reuben silently absorbs this message and doesn't respond. It's when Reuben and Lou get some time alone that he finally begins recognising that things have changed that Lou may be a better person in her new environment, that maybe she enjoys different things and that she's even quite a different person now. But more importantly, Reuben discovers that he has changed, that life has taken so much from him that he can't try and convince himself that things can be the same anymore. Because right in front of him is the love of his life and he can see that things are different. It's okay, Lou. What?
You made it. You made it beautiful. Why are you saying this? You saved my life too, Ruby. <laughs> this is a beautifully written scene which fills us with pride for Ruben while he is the one to comfort Lou. He's the one who says, it's okay because he's been told from the beginning that life has moved forward and he finally understands that it doesn't pay to claw, scream and fight to try and get back what was because he knows it can never be the same. He'll be better for accepting that a new life lays ahead of him. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the rundown of this film's themes. I just felt like I needed to make a video on the fantastic storytelling that was apparent in this film. Because even though the um, sound design is incredible, it's not the sole importance of this film. So if you had to take anything from this video, I'd like to take away that the writers nailed it and that the direction was perfect. And even the casting, superb. So yeah, I love this film. Tell me what you guys thought in the comments below. If you like this video, click the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Lots of love, Jared. <laughs>